Jesus. And considering how people feel about their cousins a hundred times smaller, <laughs> you would think the capybara would be the most hated oxygen. God, those sh are huge. Oh my God, they're like really big. They're really freaking big. Oh my God. <laughs>
That and apparently capybaras have a special form of insulin that's actually better at getting cells to divide and grow. In non-AP biology terms, because I never took that class, this meant that capys were able to exceed their weight limits without also increasing their chances of getting clapped by cancer. But of course, nature always catches up, and it wasn't like the capybara was tanky enough to disregard danger like manatees are. And in a messed up Uno reverse, becoming a literal mighty mouse meant the capybara was now much more attractive to predators than it would have been if it would have stayed the same size pre-bulk. So it's pretty much like capys today have to pay for how good their ancestors had. It. Like Gen Z. It's also yeah. possible that the capybara isn't as easygoing as memes wants you to think it is. They live in groups, and each group has a dominant alpha male who gets the most food and female validation, which can lead to a lot of infighting in the capy clan. And no matter how hard the alpha male tries to flex, there's always gonna be a few subordinates that get it in behind his back with his women. So even though the dominant alpha male lays more pipe than any single subordinate, a majority of the plumbing actually comes from the subordinates as a whole. The females also get a say in the matter too. Mostly because if a female ain't feeling a certain male, she dubs him by nosediving into the nearest body of water, <laughs> where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot what of drama- What the fuck? That shit was running on- Bro, what the hell? diving into the nearest body of water, where she can hold her breath for up to five minutes. There's actually a lot of drama in the cabbie community if you pay attention long enough. It's definitely not like Bonobos, who seem to have all social structure figured out, albeit for R-rated, definitely not safe for work reasons. That still doesn't explain why cabbie bars are so chill around animals not even in the same species. Like take Cheesecake, for example. Cheesecake was a capybara who was rescued and sent to live in a refuge for neglected and abused animals. But since she was only a baby at the time, she spent a lot of time living with the sanctuary's founder alongside her many dogs. And in typical capy fashion, Cheesecake became one of the dogs, eating, sleeping, playing, and pretty much doing everything else in between with them. Eventually, she would be promoted to the de facto foster mom for any abandoned puppies coming through the sanctuary. She would regularly adopt a family of abandoned puppies and raise them like her own blood. She would even discipline her pups if they ever got too out of line. Cheesecake was basically a mother Teresa Aww. for terriers and any other orphan pups. Those weren't the only animals she adopted in her time, but there's actually a really good reason why capybaras are the best rodents to leave your children with, and why they're the polar opposite of Chuck E. Cheese. Something about that cheddar feed never really sat right with me. Capybaras do this thing called alloparenting, where the adults take turns watching over the babies in a group in this kind of like revolving daycare system. They'll even go as far as nursing pups that aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left. He going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. <laughs> the benefit is- Yo, no, nah, that ass. He's like, yeah, I don't want none of that shit. I'm thinking about my life. Am I even real? Why? <laughs> Why is the earth green? <laughs> This nigga is really going through it, bro. That aren't even theirs. Pray for bro on the left. He going through some stuff none of us can comprehend right now. The benefit is that in a jungle full of EDP-sized threats to minors, this actually increases the cappy pup's chances at actually surviving long enough to celebrate their birthday. But it also means that Cheesecake wasn't just a stepmother. She was the mother that stepped up. Also, I just want to say that the same sanctuary would end up getting another cappy bar named Cobbler, and now Cheesecake and Cobbler are homies, and I feel like we should just take some time to appreciate that. You another thing to appreciate is that plenty of other animals like monkeys or painted dogs do the whole alla parenting thing, but cabbies are the only rodents that do it. Well, actually, technically not really. Turns out red squirrels will adopt orphans as long as they're somewhat closely enough related to them. But that's not the same as having a built-in nursery system in the group. So it seems that being naturally social, being as swole as they are, and having literal stepmother software in her system is what makes this He-Man hamster what it is. He Cappy has got so much clout that even though they're truly native to South America, they have a pretty sizable fan base all over, but especially in Japan. Why Japan? Well, it all started in the Izu Shaboten Zoo in 1982. A worker was cleaning out an enclosure with hot water when he turned around and realized that all the capybara were huddled around a warm puddle that had formed. The worker said bet, or whatever the equivalent in Japanese would be. And ever since, the Izu Shaboten Zoo would create these traditional hot yuzu baths for the water-loving hippo Aww. hamsters to enjoy. Which is the entire backstory as to how this video exists. And because whatever capybara received, they give back tenfold, these videos going viral single-handedly brought in thousands, hundreds of thousands, and even millions of yen in revenue, all from people wanting to see them. Meaning it is scientifically proven, 100% non-refutable, that capybaras are good for the economy. If your country's currently in a recession, think to the last time you saw a capybara hot tub party. If you can't remember, then I think you found your problem. We don't need stimulus checks. We need more happy cabbies per capita. That's why there are entire websites dedicated to finding the closest capybara in your area. So if I ever post a picture of me in a capybara with no context, this. This is the context. Capybaras are such an unlimited serotonin hack that naturally people are gonna ask if they're good pets. And my answer is, yeah, they'd probably be good pets. Question is, would you be a good owner? Here's why you probably wouldn't. One is that they poop. 
a lot. They kind of have the panda problem where they eat things that don't give them a whole lot back so to compensate they eat a whole lot more of it. Which means they seem to drop deuces at will. You might not get to notice just how much because capybara also take part in coprophagia. Which in NICE 2023 YouTube guidelines terms means to eat food twice to get all the nutrients out of it. And if you can handle watching this infinite food glitch in action there's the fact that you have to feed them in the first place. Remember we're talking about a gerbil that can weigh as much <laughs> as you. But you're not just feeding one cappy. Since they're social animals that don't do well alone you'd have to adopt a buddy for him or even another one after that. Cause two's company, but three's a party. And no self-respecting Cappy would hop out at the after party with an entourage of one. All jokes aside, that same logic is why Switzerland considers a guinea pig a victim of abuse if it has to live alone. It's really not that different for a guinea pig. Guinea pig. I should have used that from the beginning. There's also the fact that since half their life involves water, you're gonna have to have 24 hour access to anything the capybara can at least wade in. And before you say bathtub, just remember that most of their backdoor business happens while they're in the water, so. You might want to rethink that. But the best reason why you might want to hold off on adopting a walking coconut, it's still a wild animal. Don't let the memes get it twisted. Hey, psst. I'm not one to uh, gossip, but I heard you wasn't following me on Twitter and Instagram. And you wasn't updated when I wasn't able to post on YouTube and you thought I was gone. So follow me on Twitter and Instagram. It's that simple. Enjoy the rest of it. Despite all the hype, they're still very much capable of inflicting violence when they want to. Or when they feel like they need to. And I'ma just say, it's real cute until you get it mad and you realize you now have a 150 pound rodent with an overbite coming at you. In fact, in 2005, a capybara in a Japanese zoo murked a spider monkey that was standing in his pool by grabbing it by the neck. So if you're considering adopting oh a biting, pooping, eating machine, you might be better off just having kids because only one of them can give you tax credits. Or you can just move to Tigre, Argentina because the South American city has been taken over. And when I say taken over, I mean that in the most passive way possible. With fires and an unusually cold winter killing their food supply, the Capi clan seen the spawn en masse inside the Argentinian <laughs> gated community. They quite literally pulled up. The upside, free lawn control. The downside is these deer rabbits marrying the problems of the two animals in one package. They destroy gardens and leave behind Hershey kisses while also becoming a danger to everyone oh, on the hell no. There have also been reports of capybara <laughs> running fades with pet dogs. Although to be fair, the dogs probably started it. But there is another bright side if you want to look at it that oh, way. The biggest threat no. to a capybara isn't a jaguar or a caiman. It's actually humans who have historically hunted them for their meat and for their hide to turn into leather. We're their biggest op by far and if they decide to take back what's theirs, I'm not gonna be mad at it. And the fact that they're doing it to a gated, rich community, I, there's a moral in there somewhere. But that's gonna do it for this video. For more consistent uploads, be sure to check out my TikTok and Instagram. I try to post <laughs> daily uploads. And if you'd like to support this channel beyond subscribing, also consider becoming a patron on Patreon. But like, no, only do it if you can afford it. it. Because honestly, you watching a video this far is actually more than I can really ask for. Got a whole lot of video ideas I wanna get out for the new year. So as always, drink water, hug your mother, Dap up your father if he's not into the whole hugging thing. Try to be a cappy in a world full of cappers. And I'ma see y'all in the next one. Bonus clip for making it all the way to the end, W cappies. Not y'all about to cross the street. Nah, crazy. They just crossing. Oh, hell no. Just crossing. Oh my God. Hey, W video, man. W Capybars. Capybara. Capybars. You know what I'm saying? W video. Shout out Casual Geographic, dog.